Hello, this is Mark Lorichelle from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about the platform called Claris and the product we use within that platform is called FileMaker Pro. And if you're working with that product, there are times where you are working with customers over the wide area network. And I should say that's more often the case these days where the FileMaker solution is hosted in the cloud and your clients are in various places throughout the world. Under those conditions, networking may not be ideal or the network conditions may not be ideal, meaning there could be situations where you are traveling long distances. There are situations where you are crossing continents when it comes to sharing this data, as well as latency issues and the, any number of network issues that happen when a, you are using a solution over the wide area network and on the cloud. With that in mind, what are we developers to do? You actually can use a tool called Network Link Conditioner, which is a tool that we have been using now for a few years since we discovered it. It's a component of Xcode, which is available on the Macintosh. So it runs really only on Macintosh computers, but I would assume there's tools like this for Windows. I don't have them handy to tell you what they are, but I do know this is the one we use for Macintosh. So you need to be an Apple developer. You download Xcode. From that point on, you download and install this thing called the Network Link Additioner. You put it in your system preferences, and just like that, you can spoof a less than ideal network, or what I like to call a lousy network. And when that happens, you want to be prepared for it. Now, you, the developer, you're in the driver's seat. You're able to develop in a way that's far more prepared for a worst case scenario. For instance, let's say you're working with portals online or calculated fields or unindexed fields. All of those things cause havoc for the traditional FileMaker developer when they're developing over the wide area network. And it'd be nice to put yourself in a situation where you can see what's going to happen before it actually does. Therefore, you can find workarounds or build your system in such a way that is very happy and friendly to work over the wide area network. So what I'd like to do is show you what this tool does. We'll go through a few of the settings. We'll look at the profiles and figure out how it works. Then we'll put it to the test. We'll do a before and after under a regular network condition versus a, let's say, a 3G network or a network that has less than ideal latency. And we'll see what the impact does to FileMaker. Thanks for joining me on this video. Feel free to subscribe if this is the kind of content that speaks to you. In the meantime, let's dig in and we'll see what this is all about. So the tool is actually located as a component of Xcode. You can consider this an add-on. It's called Additional Tools for Xcode 9.3, or at least that's the version as of this video. Once you unzip that file, you'll see it here under Hardware. Then within Hardware, you'll see it here as a Preference Pane. It's called Network Link Conditioner Preference Pane. And then you can double-click that, and when you do, it'll install it within your Preferences Pane. And it looks just like this once it's installed. Network Link Conditioner, it's down here, right in my preference of my Apple computer, my Macintosh. Click on that, and then you have some things here to review. I'll take you through a quick tour of this. There's the big button here, which you want to make sure you don't accidentally turn on. I've seen so many times where I've used this, I have this on and didn't realize that I had it on, and all of a sudden my network wasn't working, and I was blaming it on other things, only to realize that the network conditioner was on. So you can turn it on and off. And then you have this thing called profile, which allows you to set an environmental variable or a profile based on these default conditions. You'll have 100% loss, a 3G, a DSL, edge, high latency DNS, LTE, very bad network, interesting name there. It's kind of like my name for lousy network, uh, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 802.11ac. So these are the things. Now, what's interesting about this last thing, this Wi-Fi 802.11ac, if you find yourself with a customer who has traditionally a local network where they have the server and the client machines all on the same hardwired network, they might ask a simple question like, how is it going to work over Wi-Fi? Here's a setting for that. Well, let's do an LTE network. Bandwidth is 50 megabytes per second, or megabits per second, I should say. Packets dropped 0%, delay of 50 milliseconds. Uplink is 10, 0, and 65. So this is the profile for the LTE that they've predetermined. Let's see what a very bad network looks like. Aha, much less. 1 megabit per second, 10% of the packets dropped with a delay of 500 milliseconds. So that would be a very bad network. Now, if you put your solution through this particular setting, you might consider this possibly too lousy to use or too slow, or you might find it just 
at the hairy edge of where if you can get your solution to perform well over this very bad network, then you are going to be good in any reasonable condition. Now, besides picking these defaults, you have this button and option here to manage profiles, which I really like because then you can set up your own custom profiles. Let's just say I want to start with an LTE network and I want to duplicate that. So I can right click here or just click on this gearbox and say duplicate. And this now shows me the LTE2. So I'll just call this LTE mark. And then we'll duplicate that. Now I've got my own profile here. And let's just say that I want my bandwidth a little less than 50 megabits per second. I want to do, let's say they only have a 20 down. Let's just do 20 down and five up. Actually, let's do three up. There we go. And then we can just keep the rest of this the same and push OK. So now I can pick the LTE mark on my favorite profile. And maybe there's a couple of profiles you want to test for in any particular situation. Let's say the customer wants it tested for Wi-Fi as well as LTE and then maybe very bad network. So maybe three different scenarios. And then you could tell them, OK, well, under this scenario, it's 10 seconds to load. Under this scenario, it's more like 20 seconds to load and the dashboard appears after 15 seconds etc etc so that's really all there is to it so you just do this and then you push the on button and you're good to go now obviously in order to really utilize this you actually have to use the network itself in order to see what a slow network would be like so i recommend that you simply install filemaker server on another machine on your local network then use this tool to imitate any number of bad wide area networks and that's really how this is set up. That's the best way to do it that I found. Okay, let's put this to the test with some practical examples. Okay, we're about to open up and do a speed test of a file here that's located on a remote server. I call the file network test. Let's get a timer up and running and we'll sign in. So this is a poorly written database that's summarizing totals of fields that are unindexed, which is why it's taking so long to open. But this is under ideal network conditions. And it looks like to open up the file, it takes about 20 seconds. Now let's set our network link conditioner to that LTE mark setting. And to recall what that is, this is going to be 20 megabits download, no packets dropped, a downlink delay of 50 milliseconds, uplink 3 megabits per second, no packets dropped, and an uplink delay of 65 milliseconds. Let's see what happens. We'll bring back our timer. We'll close the file and reopen it. And I'll come back when this is closer to being done. Okay, it finished at a minute and 17 seconds. So as you can see, the network link conditioner really does impact the network as we would expect. And it will definitely give you an indication of what things are like on a slow network or network that's compromised in some way or not as perfect as it could be. This will allow you to predict what a system might do under non-ideal conditions. Now, obviously, no one wants to have a database that opens up slowly. So in this particular case, in this exact example, it's because we have a summary field summarizing the invoice total. And the invoice total is a derivative of a calculation field that sums the line items. So one easy way to make this a lot quicker would be to, in your invoice table, instead of summing the line items, you can sum the line items at the time that the line items are added and store that not as a calculation that's unindexed or unstored, but rather as a number field instead. That will greatly optimize the summary field itself here, the grand total, as well as every listing of every invoice will also go much quicker. Let's do that now just for curiosity's sake. We'll keep the network link conditioner set to non-ideal. Let's go to the invoice table. And instead of this calculation right here called total, instead of that being an unstored calc that's summarizing line items, we'll grab the formula here, but we'll change that to a number field instead. There we go. And then we'll go to the invoice table in layout mode. 
And notice how the total has been completely cleared now because we've just made this into a number field. So I'll simply do a one-time replace here with a calculated result with that same formula so that it summarizes it now instead of continuously and constantly. Although this replace will take a few minutes, once the replace is done, the field will be indexed, which will then make the summary field evaluate much more quickly, thereby making the entire file open more quickly. So I'll come back when this is done. Okay, this replace is now finishing up. Incidentally, I still have the network conditioner on, so that's why the replace is taking longer than it technically should. Okay, so now that total field has been populated using the replace command, which means that now things should work a lot better. Let's close the file and open it again, still under those restricted network settings from the network link conditioner. And just like that, it opens instantaneously, so quick that I couldn't even start the timer. So the point of this story is that a lot of developers will blame summary fields for their troubles and their worries. When the fact of the matter is, it's not necessarily the summary field that slows the system down, but rather the unindexed calculations that the summary field is looking at. This summary field is still calculating the same total it did just a minute ago, but this time it's doing it against a number field that's already predefined. So finally, if you were to do this in a real-world scenario, your invoice total would obviously have to be updated at the time you're entering line items. So what people normally do is they would create script triggers so that when the line item quantity or amount changes, a script will evaluate it at that time and put the total at the bottom of the invoice stored in the number field. So the adjustments are made in real time as the invoice is being entered and manipulated. The total then becomes a number field. It becomes indexable which means that anything driven from that, such as a summary field, in this case, the grand total, so now that grand total will be able to evaluate that number field much more quickly. At this point, I can add a lot more invoices without really impacting performance. Let's watch this again, but this time, take it to an extreme situation. We'll set it to very bad network, which as you recall, is only one megabit down and up, with some packets dropped in the middle there, as well as a delay of 500 milliseconds on either end. Let's see if FileMaker will hold up to the test. So just to even get prompted for the dialog, we have a major delay going on. But let's just do a timer anyway to see how long it'll take this to open. Let me clear my timer, and we'll click Sign In and start the time. But there it is, nine seconds. So in a worst case scenario, we're talking something that's almost unrealistically bad. Barely any bandwidth up or down with packets dropped and major delays along the way. Yet this system opened in nine seconds after optimization. I don't even want to test it how it was the old way. I think we'd be there for hours waiting for it to open. Technically speaking, if you can build all your systems so that they open up quickly under less than ideal situations, then you can consider yourself perhaps a more experienced developer and one who's more in tune with developing over the wide area network for modern day solutions that are hosted in the cloud. I hope you enjoyed this video and demonstration. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.